All right, now you listen here, you fat bastard. You're gonna get on this. You're not gonna give me any trouble. You hear me? Sick and tired. Toting you around. You're not pulling your weight. Damn it. I told you, quit messing around. Hey guys, welcome back, it's Free Tip Friday, and yes, this is a blowtorch. So, before I go on a rant, let's hook this thing up and see what it can do. <laughs> well, today we're gonna learn how to do the Shosugiban, burn wood technique thingamadooger. Um, my buddy Caleb, who owns Custom Roofing here in Victoria, Super solid roofing contractor. If you're a local guy looking for a new roof, uh, he lent me this torch set up here. Put my hundred pounder. Alright, so for those of you who are just tuning in to this channel and you're like, what is this guy doing with a blow torch? and a pile of wood in front of him. Um, today we are gonna learn how to do what's called shosugiban, which means it's a burnt wood in Japanese or something like that. And yes, I know the Japanese probably did not invent this technique. It's been around for centuries. Um, but the long and short of it is um, you take a blowtorch. This is for mainly exterior siding applications, but it just works in general for any application if you want this look. Um, and what we do is we're gonna torch the surface of these siding boards, this board and batten siding that I'm doing. And what it does is it's gonna burn the surface, char it all black and kind of get it to that alligator skin where it starts to crack a little bit along the surface. And then I'm gonna take a wire brush. I've actually got a, a wire brush wheel sander that should hopefully speed things up a little bit. And I'm gonna brush off all the burnt charred bits. And uh, what it will do is leave kind of this really like embossed sandblastic raised grain look on the wood um, and it'll also darken the wood quite a bit to like a really rich dark brown and uh, the whole point of this process is that uh, not only does it create a really cool aesthetic look it also preserves the wood um, it makes it more fire retardant and uh, seals all the pores up so that insects and like rot and water damage and fungus can't attack the wood so it creates a really long lasting durable product. So it's kind of a win-win on all fronts. It's just a bunch of labor that we got to do. So being a carpenter, I know a little bit about wood. Um, and I know that the growth rings will dictate which way the wood is prone to cup. Now, if your growth rings are going in a circular motion like this, right? Arching this way, um, radial shrinkage, is what happens and so the growth rings will want to contract upon each, upon themselves which will pull the surface of this board to cup this way right so if the growth rings are going this way it's actually going to cup the opposite way as it shrinks and obviously i'm applying an insane amount of heat and flame to this wood so it's likely going to warp a little bit i don't know for sure but i'm guessing it will um, it could even crack a tiny bit, but I don't think I'll be putting quite that much heat on it. It'll be a really quick process, so it's not going to penetrate super deep into the wood, hopefully. So I'm going to orient all my boards so that they cup this way. Um, why do you want to do, do that? Well, in my case, I'm using this as board and batten siding, right? So these boards are going to be sitting vertically on my barn um, with battens on the joints, kind of just the way they're laid out here. And then there'll be a two inch batten kind of covering the seams in between the boards. So I want the boards, if they are going to cup, to cup on the edges and not in the middle, right? Because the edges is where I'm going to be putting the nails. So when I put the board up onto the, up onto the building with the cup in it, I can nail that cup flat 
on either side. Whereas if the cup is going this way, I'm still going to be nailing on the edges and then the, the siding is going to be cupping out, which is not good. Will it, you know, cause any long-term problems? Not likely. It just won't look as good. And for me, it looks, you know, every day I get up and I look at this beautiful face and it just inspires me to do everything, to make everything as beautiful as I am. So, so that's, so that's just kind of the way that I roll. If you're okay with wood cupping the other way, then, you know, just pick whatever face you want. But that's, that's my technique here. Okay. Let's see how it works. <laughs> Actually went a little slower than I anticipated. I let this wood dry for about uh, all yesterday. I laid it out here. It was pretty wet. It had been rained on. And the surface looks kind of dry. It's still a bit wet in some spots, so I might need to let it dry a little bit longer. Um, but it might just be how long it takes to burn. But that was that was a couple minutes at least right there per board. All right, now I've got this wire brush sander. I know that's kind of a tool not a lot of people have, um, but I've seen a lot of people just use like a wire brush on a broom handle, works just as well, or a stiff nylon bristle brush. Um, I'm just hoping that this will be a little bit more aggressive and kind of take off the dark bits because I don't want it to be super dark. You know what I'm saying? So let's give it a shot here. Oh, that's sexy. Oh, that's so sexy. All right, now the sander part's a little bit tricky because if I pause anywhere with the sander, it kind of gets a little bit more aggressive, giving me a blotchy look. But overall, it's really nice patina on the wood. I'd have to do like long passes. All right, so the wood I'm using here is red cedar. And you can see that it kind of gives it this nice dark brown look. Kind of raises the grain a bit be a bit sandblasted look. Yeah, when you feel it, it's just got a really gorgeous raised grain. Still very smooth, but just feels so embossed. It's bossed, I just bossed, I bossed this board. Let's see, uh, let's see what it looks like if we put a little coat of oil on there, maybe some tongue oil or natural clear finish or something. Set the board up on these saw horses here. Went over it a few more times with the sander to even it out. It's got a really nice even patina. Feels amazing. And I've got this, uh, it's called Timber Pro UV. Obviously, I'm, this is not a sponsor or anything. It's just a can of stuff that I bought. I don't even know if it's any good. Uh, it's a natural oil UV kind of finish for decks and fences. Uh, I think, it, I don't know if it's where it's locally, if it's locally made or not, but it seemed kind of like a decent product. I've tried pretty much all of them, and Sickens is usually my favorite. But let's see what this stuff looks like. 
All right, so it's going to darken it quite a bit. I don't know if I like that. It's really kind of milky as it goes on, and then it dries clear. It's basically a clear finish. Um, but obviously with this burnt wood, it darkens it a lot. <laughs> All right, we'll let that dry for a little while and see what it looks like finished. I definitely like the color of the untreated section better. It's too dark when I put the clear coat on it. So I'm going to just leave everything raw. You can see up close that uh, the color and the patina and everything is really beautiful when you just leave it raw and treated. And I'm actually confident that now that it's been burnt that uh, it definitely won't go gray as quickly as just like raw wood in the sunlight. So we'll probably have to wait a couple years to see if that's true. Um, and if it does start to go gray, I can always put a clear coat on at a later date. But for now, I'm going to leave it raw, which is going to save me a ton of time not having to stain all the boards. All right, so now that I've done this test piece, I am super pumped to get the whole siding done on this barn. Hey, buddy. So I'm going to be doing like a semi-transparent kind of whitewash trim with this nice, rich, dark brown siding behind it. I think it's just really going to give the barn just amazing presence. So hopefully you take advantage of this really simple technique. All you need is a propane tank and a blow torch and a wire brush or a stiff nylon bristle brush. And you can make new rough sawn boards or plain boards, any wood, look like it's really old, weathered, sandblasted, kind of 100 year old wood, just like that. Instant antiquing. Uh, keep in mind that if you try and do this technique on a larger beam, especially green beams, or ones that have the heart center of the tree in the middle, um, you will experience like some cracking going on. So if you're not a fan of cracking, you either want to make sure your beams are dry or at least uh, free of heart center. They don't have the center of the tree in them. They won't be prone to crack as much. On narrow boards like this, these are, are pretty green, straight from the lumber mill, and I didn't experience hardly any cupping at all. Um, they're still, yeah, they're still flat, so uh, the torching technique isn't that hard on the woods. Put that in your back pocket, save it for a rainy day. Till next time, guys. Samurai Ho.